Resurrection Sunday. Stand and sing with us. Good morning and welcome to the Vine at Clemson UMC. We are glad that you are here. Uh, happy Easter. I've been waiting all morning to say this. Traditionally in the life of the church, uh, we will greet each other on Easter Sunday. A uh, leader would say, he is risen. They would respond, he is risen indeed. Let's try that. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen 
He is risen indeed, and that is why we gather together on worship every Sunday. But in particular, on Easter morning, we come to hear that story once again, that the tomb is empty, that Jesus has indeed rose from the dead. And we will talk about that and the story of that and the significance that has for us. A few announcements as we get started. Uh, one, if you haven't met yet, my name is Steve Simino. I'm the lead pastor here for The Vine, also the campus minister here for uh, Clemson UMC and Clemson Wesley. It's just a joy to be here and worship with you this morning. We've got several announcements. If you got one of these, if not, you can grab it on the way out. On the first Wednesday of every month, we have a fellowship meal here in this space. Um, that'll, our last one of the semester is coming this May 4th, so be sure you're here for that. I already asked about, like, Star Wars theme. It's not happening, but we'll have some great garlic skillet chicken. Be sure you're here. Good time for that. Youth ministry, if you're interested in that, the youth will not meet tonight, but their sign-up for their youth retreat is coming up like this week. So be sure you do that. Um, you see Trey in the back or Miss Candace. You go in the group meet, we'll get you there. Um, there's email here. You can handle that stuff. Um, make sure you sign up for that. The only other big announcements um, to be aware of, well, two. One, our worship times are shifting coming up on May 15th. Um, so if you're planning on worship with us, just have a be heads up on that. Um, we will go continue our 830 traditional. Divine, our time, will move from 10.30 to 9.45, and then our 10.30 traditional will go to 11 o'clock. And again, we're getting uh, some changes in our pastoral leadership, and so our new senior pastor coming in June will be preaching all three services. Um, we're going to make that transition in May, uh, May 15th, just to go ahead and get us in the rhythm of that. Also, I'm going to go ahead and claim it. Sometimes we have crickets, sometimes we have all kind of things. The fire alarm was so excited this morning that Jesus rose from the dead that it was like, we're going to just like go off with bells and sounds and all that kind of stuff. So if you hear that, just know that's the spirit moving throughout our electrical system. Everything is good. If you see me panic, that's when you panic. Otherwise, we're just going to roll through it. Um, there's some keys in the back door. I may wink at uh, Candace back there to go and press reset if necessary. Not right now, but when it happens, um, which has been a thing. So we're going to claim it uh, at the beginning of worship. But we are glad that you're here. Before we stand and continue to sing, we're going to light this community candle. For those that have been here a while, you, you, we do this every week. If this is your first time, we light this candle each and every time we gather in this space to worship together on Sunday morning. And it symbolizes for us, and even pertinent on Easter, right, that the light of Christ is always dwelling among us. It reminds us that no matter how you came this morning, maybe mama was yelling, get dressed, get in the car, we got to get there. And you took a deep breath before you walked in and put yourself together, right? Or maybe you're barely putting one foot in front of the other, or you're just on cloud nine, you are here, it's Easter. However, wherever you come, when we come into this place, we come together to worship as one, to sing with each other, to sing for each other, and to come and to worship the God who has created each and every one of us, and to worship the God who has redeemed us all, and to worship the God who promises to pour out God's Holy Spirit upon us all and sustain us through our journey. And it's in that spirit that I invite you to stand as we continue in worship. my tune till I 
how you guys came in this morning, but I was totally uh, with Steve on, you know, you come in. I remember my Easter's as a kid. It was um, mom screaming at you, get dressed, hurry up, come down. And, and then you were like, oh, holy, when you walk through the door, right? And, you know, for, for me, I don't know about for you guys, but for me, this, this, as I get older, I realize there's probably so little that I know about resurrection and um, all that Easter is supposed to be. But I do know it's not about Easter eggs and bunnies and stuff. So, but when we think about resurrection, to think about how it works for everybody and how on that Friday, the worst thing that could possibly happen is never the last thing that happens. And that's the story that Jesus tells us and the gospel tells us over and over and over again, that no matter how bad it is, it doesn't stop there. So wherever you are today, just know that it doesn't stop there, that our story gives hope and our story just keeps getting better.
want to invite this time our children preschool through second grade. If you'd like to go to Vine Kids, you can meet Miss Candace and Lindley in the back. We're mixing up on you today. It's Easter. Go to the back left back there. Um, we're going to head out to Orange Peel. We've got some cool crafts and exciting stuff for you today. If you're a parent and you're like, what's Vine Kids? Where are my kids going? They're going right down the hall through that little, it's, a clo- it's not a closet, it's a hallway, y'all. And uh, le- <laughs> leads to our youth wing and they'll get a kid-sized version of the sermon and scripture reading, and then they'll come back and join us for Holy Communion and the rest of our service. They're in, they're in good hands. So if you want to go see them, that's, that's where they'll be. As our kiddos depart and we prepare to hear our story once again, I invite you into a time of prayer. Let us pray together. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for this new day. Lord, for Easter Sunday, we know every Sunday is a mini resurrection day, but God, we come to you shouting your praises, your hosannas, your hallelujahs for all that you have done. The fact that the tomb is indeed empty, O God, we give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks, O God, that as mighty as you are, as awesome as you are, that you still invite us in, that you claim us and you call us as your children, that you trust us to send us out into the world to be your hands and feet. For that, O God, we give you thanks and praise. As we come to you this morning, O God, some of us are filled with joy and the blessings in our life, and we give you thanks upon praise and thanks upon praise for all the blessings in our lives. Lord, for the ones that we see and smile about and laugh about and the ones that we have yet to see or yet to discover that are already in our lives, we give you thanks and praise. God, we also confess that there are things in our lives that we bring to you this morning. There are illnesses, there is discomfort, there are questions, there are struggles, Some of us feel like we are much more in the grave than resurrected right now. But God, we give you thanks that that is not the final answer. And we trust you with all that we have this morning. Every concern, everything on our heart, we lay them before you, trusting and knowing that you will be present. And we pray, O God, that you will be the great comforter. We pray that you will be the great healer. We pray that you would work peace in this world and amongst our relationships and our families. That you would bring healing. O God, that you would simply move. We also pray knowing, O God, that the way that you work most often is through each of us. And so we pray that you would continue to pour out your spirit upon us. That as we pray for peace, as we pray for love and mercy and reconciliation and light in the world, God, that you might use us to be those things to the people that need to see your light. That we might be your agents of hope and love and mercy in this world. We confess, O God, that we can't do it without you, and so we boldly pray for that now. We give you thanks, O oh God. We pray that you would speak through us. Lord, I pray that you would speak through me or despite me, that you would have a word for us this morning. We ask all this in the holy and precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning comes from Ecclesi- I'm just kidding, not Ecclesiastes. I'm excited. We're going to read the Gospel of Luke 24. Hear these words and let them fall afresh and new. If it's your first time hearing them, hear them. If you've heard them for... 80 plus years. May they fall afresh in you this morning. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again? Then they remembered his words. And returning from the tomb, they told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of Jesus, and the other women who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up, ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Right? We gather today on Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection. But we know that Easter didn't begin just this morning, that Easter began on Thursday, and many of us gathered together in this space on Thursday, on Monday, Thursday, to begin the journey with Jesus to the cross. If you recall, it was Jesus who gathered with his disciples in the upper room, and they decided to share in a Passover feast together. And it was there in that space that he encouraged them, a commandment to love one another. He washed their feet. He instituted the Lord's Supper, which we will participate in later today. 
And he sat there sharing in a meal with his friends who he knew one of them would betray him over to the authorities. The others would deny him and scatter, that, and scatter from him in his time of need. We would see later that night that Jesus would, would go into the Garden of Gethsemane and he would pray, Lord, there's any, God, there's any way you could take this cup from me. If there's any way I don't have to go through this, please, oh God, take it from me. But if not, your will be done, not mine. And we know that he was arrested in the garden. He was tried, and Peter denied him, and the other disciples left him, and he was, he was mocked, he was, he was tortured, he was hung up on a cross and died. And late on Thursday evening, when we concluded our service in here, the last thing we did was extinguish the, the, the Christ candle. And the words were, we simply wait, and we wait in hope. And we waited through Friday, and we waited through Saturday. And we got up this morning, and I don't know about you, I got an alarm that woke me up big time, but I, I get pumped for Easter because we come and we remember that when the, when the ladies went to the tomb, that it was empty. It was rolled away. And I love how Luke's passage, or the, the Gospel of Luke, points out, why are you looking for the dead amongst, or living amongst the dead? He is not here. He is risen. And we celebrate that, that resurrection. We celebrate that victory. Over and over again, we come and we tell the story every Sunday, but in particular on this Sunday, we make sure that we tell that story. The tomb is rolled away, that the living is not amongst the dead, that he is indeed risen and alive. It's an incredible story on its own, right? But we come because we want to hear a little bit more than that, more than just the victory, right? You ever been around somebody that talks about all their victories and you're like, oh, that's, that's great. Good for you, buddy. Proud of you. All right, right? But what does it mean for us? What does it mean for us? We gather together, and yes, we want to worship the God that created us, but, but what, what does it have to do with us as well, this, this resurrection that happens? And Christy mentioned it in between our, our songs. What Easter means for us is that the worst thing will never be the last thing. That is what Easter means for us. Hear this again. The worst thing will never be the last thing. And you're like, well, Steve, I don't know. Like, death is pretty serious. Yes, it is. And yes, it hurts. And yes, it stings. Jesus' death was very real. It was very painful. But guess what? We didn't stop on Friday. We gathered together on Sunday to be reminded that that is not the worst thing. Yes, even death, even death does not have a ba the bounds on us. There is indeed resurrection. There is no grave too deep, no stone too heavy that God, when God's a part of the picture, that God can't resurrect and redeem been thinking about this week and different stories of, of resurrection or times when people have come out of the deep and, and find themselves in a, in a time of, of, of resurrection now. And sometimes it is, I mean, death is very real, and I get that. And I know how, how painful and emotional it is, and I've lost people in my life. But even, even that, we believe and confess the resurrection. I was speaking with some friends this week, the um, loss of a, a loved one, and they were uh, reminiscing the love they had together as a couple, as a married couple. And both of these folks met after the, uh, one, was, one was divorced and one had recently lost uh, her husband to some, some traumatic things. And both of them found themselves in the tomb. Both of them found themselves in the grave thinking, what's next? How am I ever going to get out of this? But it was incredible to hear their story of how they came together, even in the, the midst, they're both in their own pits, to see the way in which God was able to resurrect them. That the worst thing they thought ever happened in their life was not the last thing that happened in their life. That there was indeed resurrection. There was love and years and years of an incredible marriage that went on. I think about other folks who um, find themselves, at, you know, in the despair of addiction and, and feel like they hit, they do hit rock bottom, right? But I've heard story after story of folks who come back and say, that was the worst part of my life, but it wasn't the last point. It wasn't the last moment. And they've gone on, and, and some people just, you know, living their lives in recovery. I've seen folks who've, who've started um, shelters and places in the ministries that happen through their willingness to allow God to resurrect them out of the depths are incredible. We have uh, our students this past um, year, uh, or every year, uh, we do a series called Perspectives. And they share their stories and what they've learned through their four years of college. How has God taught them? What has God worked in their lives? How has God worked? And I'm always inspired when students talk about the ways in which they found failure. They had setbacks, real disappointment, anguish early on in their, in their school time here at Clemson. But to know that that was not the end. And to see them allowing God to use them. And to, even their perspective and to share where God has brought them to now is not the depths that they had started in. That is incredible stories to hear. 
But I want you to hear this as we talk on Easter morning and talk about resurrection, how God can work in our lives, and that the worst thing is never the last thing. Notice that God does not say that death doesn't happen. Hard things will happen. Difficult things do happen. God does not cause them, but God can indeed work through them and redeem them if we allow God to be involved. We allow God to be involved in the story, then we're reminded that even when death does happen, we can say with confidence that it does not have the final word. Whether that be real or actual death, or the grave, the tomb that you find yourself in for situation, relationships, whatever, knowing that the worst thing is never the last thing. As we begin, as we continue on resurrection, right, so one, we celebrate the victory of Jesus. Two, we remind that what Easter means for us, that the worst thing is never the last thing. I know I keep repeating that, but I want to make sure you hit that because that is huge in our theology and who we are as a people of faith. But you also be reminded that we are called to be a resurrection people and that God works in our own lives and we share that, right? But also to be reminded that in every gospel, in all four gospels, the resurrection story lends itself and leads and calls the disciples to go and to do. It is not simply enough for us to hear the story and get excited on Easter and dress up, and y'all look good this morning, let me just say, right? But it's not just enough to do that. It's not just enough to celebrate that story, but we are called to live a life of a resurrected people. Meaning just as we prayed a moment ago, and I know I prayed for you, but I prayed for you, so here we go, right? We are called to be a people who are living hope. We are called to be a people who are the light of the world. We are called to be a people who go into the darkness, who go down into the tombs and the graves and the pits where people might find themselves and to remind them and to speak a word of hope and say, this will not be the last place. This will not be the last thing in your life. We've got you. We will work. We will work. We will work. Part of being a disciple, part of being a resurrected people is to be a people who show up, who show up for others in their time of need, to profess a word of hope, to profess a word of love, to profess a word of life over and over again. These are the people that we are called to be. So we celebrate God's victory today. Their tomb is empty. We give thanks to God over and over again that whatever situation you may find yourself in, to be reminded that the worst thing is never the last thing. And we boldly pray and proclaim and ask God to use us, that we might be a message of resurrection for those around us, that we might speak into the depths, speak into the dark, hope, light, mercy, and grace. And last question on Easter Sunday this morning. Question of, well, what if I'm not really there yet? Or do you really believe it? Right? I got dressed up. We're doing this stuff, right? Well, keep in mind, there's going to be times of doubt. Even the disciples, the first ones to hear the story, were like, nah, you crazy, right? No, you, you didn't have your coffee yet this morning, you know? No. For they went back and they found the empty tomb. They saw the re- resurrection. The resurrected Christ came to them and speak, spoke to them. The rest of Luke, go home and read it. He, he comes to the people. They're walking down the road, and they come to him in the upper room. And he comes to them, and he says, peace be with you. And they were filled with joy. People often doubt the resurrection. They doubt the church. They doubt people of faith. But they doubt us when we aren't living a resurrected life. They doubt us when we aren't a people of hope, a people of light, a people of life. And so I encourage you as you go out from this place on Easter Sunday, to live Easter each and every day, to be a resurrected people. That the question is: This Jesus guy real? Did this really happen? When they encounter you, in the way in which you bring hope, in the way in which you bring life, the way in which you show up for people, the way in which you be, there is no denying that you are living and proclaiming a resurrected God. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks once more. Lord, we give you thanks that you have triumphed over the darkness, that love has conquered hate, that there is indeed life and victory over death, that you have break, broken the chains of sin and death. Lord, we thank you for your resurrection. We give you thanks, O oh God, that you call us into that and you promise to resurrect us as well. Both our, body, our bodily selves and after death, that, Lord, we know that we will be with you, but God, we give you thanks. We don't have to wait. We can begin to live a life of resurrection here and today. Give us the power, O oh God, to step into those tombs and give us the words and the actions to proclaim that this will not be the end. We ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Come to our time in our service where we collect our, our tithes and offerings, and uh, we're going to pass the baskets today, all right? It's going to be good stuff. And uh, all the proceeds come 
um, go support ministries here in this community and from our missionaries around the world. And so we encourage you to give generously. You will stand and sing. We'll pass them on the front row. And you can go back to early 2020. You can remember I do this. We're going to pass them zigzag. It's going to be good. Let's stand, worship, and give. kiddos will join us in just a second. You can't miss them. They'll come in quick and fast. We come together to celebrate here at the Table of Grace. This is something we do each and every week, but we get extra excited to come on Easter Sunday. As I mentioned earlier, Jesus began this, this meal on Monday, Thursday, and the disciples didn't have the knowledge that we have and the impact that it has. And I just want to invite you as pastor here at this church to be reminded that this table doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to this church. It doesn't belong to United Methodist. This is God's table. And God invites to his table all who seek to live in love and peace with one another and want to know God more fully. If you're sitting there asking, even me, yes, even you, all are invited to this table to receive and accept God's grace. I invite you to follow along on the screen. There'll be times when appropriate uh, to respond as we celebrate the great Thanksgiving together. The Lord be with you. you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks and praise to you, God Almighty. We give you thanks, O Lord, that it was you who saw fit to make creation out of nothing, to create the heavens and the earth, to make the creatures that inhabit it. Lord, you formed us, humankind, in your image. You breathed the breath of life into us and you called us good. We confess, O God, there are times when we have not gotten it right. There are times when we have not loved you or our neighbors as we should. There are times when we definitely have not lived as a resurrected people. But we give you thanks, O Lord, that you welcome us back with your open arms and your steadfast love and your abounding grace time and time again. And for that, O God, we give you thanks and praise. We remember when we come to this table both this day and every day, but especially on Easter, that it was you who sent your son down to earth, that he would heal the sick. 
He would proclaim release to the captives. He would eventually die on a cross and be resurrected three days later, breaking the chains of sin and death and showing us a way to forgiveness, to new life, to life and life abundant. And for that, oh God, we give you thanks and praise. We remember it was on the night in which Jesus was to give himself up for us that he was having a meal with his disciples. It was there that he took some bread. He gave thanks to you. He blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, all of you. This is my body which will be given for you. Do this often in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup. Once again, he gave thanks to you, O God. He gave it to his disciples who were there. Disciples who loved him. Disciples who would deny him. Disciples who would betray him, but still disciples that he would love. He said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this often in remembrance of me. And so for these, your mighty acts, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise as we offer ourselves in union with Christ as a holy and living sacrifice as together we proclaim the mystery of faith. That Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord, we ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon all who are gathered here this morning, both in person and worshiping with us near and far. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon this wheat of the field and fruit of the vine. May they be for us the body and blood, your hands and feet, O oh God. Make us one with you, make us one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until we come and we feast at your final heavenly banquet table. We ask all these things in the holy and precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray this prayer with confidence. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we share in this loaf together, it's a reminder that we are made one in the body of Christ. When we drink from the cup, it's a reminder that we are given forgiveness. We are offered grace. That no matter what we've done, the worst thing that we've done in our life does not have to be the last thing. That there is forgiveness and grace in Jesus time and time again. I invite those who are serving to come forward and I'll give some instructions one, I want to say, kiddos, good job. When you get home, you get an extra piece of candy because that is the quietest I have ever. And if your parents say no, you tell them Pastor Steve says so. <laughs> but you'll receive, we're not going to drink from the same cup in case you got worried. It's also my balls light up real quick. Um, we have uh, individual cups, but you'll come through. Our holy sanitizers will we'll get you a, a little bit of hand sanitizer. Rub it in. You'll come in. Remember, we don't snatch grace. Jesus rose from the tomb. He's got your cover. He's going to give it to you. Just receive God's grace. Open hand, open palm. Service will place a piece of bread in your hand, and then they'll give you a cup of juice. We invite you to consume the bread and juice as you come through. You don't have to wait to get back to your seat. There are receptacles to handle your empty um, plastic cups here and in the back. Um, we don't have ushers here. We're going to have three stations, one in the, two in the front, one in the back. Um, Dave and myself will be in the back. Um, and we encourage you to come down the middle and then go back and sit on the end, okay? Folks in the back, right, just kind of figured out. It's nice. It's Easter. Say hello. We'll make it happen, and we'll come in here. There is plenty for everyone. This is God's table. All are invited. I'm going to get people situated, and then as you're ready, you can come. And once again, if you're wondering, even me? Yes, even you. That empty tomb is not exclusive. That empty tomb was not for a select few. That empty tomb was for all of humanity. And you were all beloved children of God. As you're ready, won't you come and receive?
everybody got their fill. If not, we have some more. I have a feeling that's kind of what the first Easter was like, a little bit of chaos, but a whole lot of grace, right? It's all, it's all good. We figured it out in the back especially. But I invite you to stand, having down the table of grace, stand as you're able, as together we pray our prayer following communion. Gracious God, we thank you for this holy mystery where you have given yourself to us as we go into the world with your grace and love. Help us to be your hands and feet as we share your love with the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. announcement before we uh, hear the benediction. Um, our nurture team in the church has printed up some magnets, so if you need some new magnet swag for your refrigerator, uh, Chris and Steph are handing those out. They're not trying to sell anything. They're just giving away magnets, so get one of those on your way out. Um, and hear this, folks, as we leave today, as we come every Sunday to hear this resurrection story, know that the God who rose from the dead was a humble God who wants to walk with you and to raise you as well and to resurrect you over and over again. I hope this morning that you have heard a word of hope. I hope that you have heard a word of forgiveness. And to be reminded, if someone asks, Mommy, what, Daddy, what is Easter? Your friends, what is Easter? It's a reminder. And what it means for us is that the worst thing 
will never be the last thing. You are a resurrected people. He is risen. He is risen. Let's go live like it. Amen.